Um, okay, so now we're getting introduced to this Miami rapper from the Pork and Bean Projects. At least I think that's what she said. Her name is Hood Brat, okay? She's shooting a music video, and it has that whole Miami down south, you know, twerk music shit that's popular for whatever reason. But honestly... I think that she got something going. I, I like the way she sounds on the track. I'm not saying that her verses are the best, but I think that she has some potential to be better than what she is. I, I already like the way she looks, and I like her personality already. So um, we're going to see what Hood Brat is about. Hopefully, we can hear more music from her so I can really make my judgment. However, yeah, that song sounds like some shit they'll play at the fucking gay club and everybody be, you know in hand and like it's the best thing since sliced bread when it's the best thing since fucking rose but okay bitch so <coughs> trina comes in that bitch and she meets up with hood brent while she's at her video shoot and um apparently you know hood brent grew up around trina we already know trina old as a motherfucker trina in her mid 40s literally y'all know and um you know hood brent grew up around trina you know she would see trina and trick come to the port to the pork and bean pork uh not pork and bean pork shop pork and bean uh projects they there to record music and do what it do and all types of stuff like that so she so she grew up around this type of shit okay she grew up around it. and um you know she always wanted trina to be her mentor so trina wants to invite her on the tour and, um, you know, and like Trina said, the only person that she felt, the only two people that she felt like was worthy of being on stage is J. Diva and, um, <coughs> and Suki. And I don't know why the fuck Suki was even, but okay. However, um, Nikki Natural, apparently Hood Bread knows Nikki Natural. And, um, you know, Trina basically said how she pissed her off and how she rubbed to the wrong way by being very disrespectful and everything like that. And, you know, Hood Bread really ain't got much to say because she know her. So Hood Bread tells her story of how she's been working all these jobs while she's doing her music. Her sister killed herself, so now she's raising all three of her kids now. She's really busting her ass to make life better for her and her sister's kids. And Trina was very touched by this story, especially being that she just lost her mom. So, you know, when you got a story like that, you can't do nothing but root for a bitch. So, I'm already rooting for you, hood bread. I'm already rooting for you. <coughs> so, Joy is on a date with Briscoe. And I must say, you guys, the two, the 21-year-old Scotty would have been all over Briscoe. Because Briscoe is fine as fuck to me. I don't know why. These days, I don't go for those type of guys. I actually like preppy guys. They got something going for themselves. But him, he used to be one of those roughneck niggas that could satisfy me. Just for me. He was that type. And when I was 21 and 22, and that was the type of nigga I go for. That's why I'm fucked up in the mind right now. I always wanted a thug nigga and all this shit. Whatever. <laughs> so... They had on a date, you know, Joy think he fine, and I agree he is. So they they talking. Briscoe always wanted to holler at Joy, but she was always off limits because she was married to Trick. But my thing about it is, ain't Trick your homeboy, so shouldn't she still be off limits? Okay, whatever. So they started talking about Nikki Natural, and apparently Briscoe said they used to kick it. And Joy can't wait to bring that tea to Trick Daddy, okay? She can't wait to bring Trick Daddy that tea. So then... Joy comes by Trick Daddy house to talk to him. And Trick is like, you know, are you hungry? You know, I done cook, you hungry? And she was like, yeah, you know, I'm always hungry. And this thing, you know, he called Nikki in here. And Joy don't know what she getting herself into because Nikki is in the motherfucking building. And so, um, it's like Trick said, I'm bringing y'all two together. And Joy was like, why are you bringing us together for? <coughs> and he like, listen. Uh, Joy, Nikki think you got a problem with her. So I want to bring her up in here so y'all two can talk so y'all consider this shit. Because number one, you wife and you ain't never going nowhere. So therefore, I, I want to know what the issue is. So Nikki was like, yeah, yeah, I feel like you and your team was all against me. Y'all don't like me for whatever reason. And I want to know why. And Joy was like, girl, ain't nobody thinking about you. Yada, yada, yada. So she spills the tea about Nikki and Briscoe. And she basically said, yeah, because Briscoe told me that you was fucking off with him two weeks ago. Trick was like, what? 
Nikki Natural was like, that is not fucking true. Briscoe was fucking lying. And Trick Daddy was like, I've known Joy for over 20 years. I've known Nikki for a few minutes. So what make you think I'm not going to believe Joy? And I kind of feel bad for Nikki. I ain't going to lie. I kind of feel bad for Nikki on this tip right here. Because at the end of the day, Trick, this is supposed to be your bitch. So why the fuck you sitting up here taking what the fuck your ex-wife just said about her? You don't know what type of motives Joy got. Now, all Joy is doing is basically repeating what the fuck Briscoe said. That's all she doing. But she's doing it for messy ass purposes. Because to be quite honest, baby girl, you didn't have to tell Trick a motherfucking thing. Because it, really it really don't mean shit. But at the same time, if she did fuck Briscoe two weeks ago, then maybe, she, maybe he did need to know. I don't know. But should you be the one to tell him? Why not tell Trina? Let Trina tell him. You know, but you had to be the one to tell him. And child, <coughs> she was like, so you're going to be on Team Joy. At the end of the day, I don't even know why I'm here. You're going to be on Team Joy. You're going to be on Team Joy. And then, you know, she basically told him, you can leave. And then Trick was like, no, you can get the fuck out. And then she was like, you can't put me out. Then Joy was like, oh, I can put you out. She was like, you can't do shit. Joy was like, baby, my name is on this deed, baby. This is my house. You get the fuck out. And to be quite honest, that shit was some funny tag team, hilarious ass shit. They got to be one of the best scenes I've seen in the Love of Hip Hop franchise. One of the best. And I ain't saying that is the best. But that's one of the best things. And that shit was fucking funny as fuck. Joy and Trick basically tag team their bad lace front wig. Cotton candy, hair wind ass bitch. They tag team that girl and sent her on her way. And that shit was funny as fuck, okay? Funny as hell. As bad as I feel for her, that shit was funny. I can't tell you no lies. It was funny. So MJ, with his fine self, he trying to get the mood right for him and Amara. You know, he didn't sit up there, got some wine. They relaxing in the bed. And um, MJ was basically talking about the future. The things that he wants out of the relationship. <clears throat> you know, he want to get married to Amara. He want to have kids with Amara. He just want to take life in another direction. And that sounds so sweet and everything. But MJ, you ain't been with Amara five minutes. And you talking about marriage and kids. What are you really trying to get out of this? I know Amara really ain't got that much. But she's on her way. So what are you really trying to get out of this? Because you ain't been with her that long to be talking about no damn kids and marriage. And this girl got a struggling career. She has every right to not want to have that type of life yet when she's trying to get her career off the ground. You know what I mean? She wants to make sure she's at a spot in life, especially financially, to take care of a child and to keep a marriage going. You got to let her be her. You got to let her do her thing. Y'all ain't been together that long, no way. You got to let this shit flow first. She got a career on the line right now. She ain't got time to be having no damn baby right now or getting married. Like, cut it out, wait on her, be a supportive man, and that's it. That's all you need to know. So now it's time for the confrontation we've been waiting for the last two episodes. Trina and her folks confront Julian, okay? Trina went the fuck off on Julian. She went the fuck off on him. She said, my album is off the shelf. I'm getting sued. These producers and the songwriters on the album ain't been getting paid. So what the fuck am I going to do? You got a, you got a deal for $300,000 and that was supposed to be for me, but you took it for yourself <coughs> and got a deal for your own record label when I was your star client. Yeah, Trina, you was the star client, but girl, your star power ain't really that much. But, you know, but go off, sis. Go off. Because, you know, you, you're good at trying to make yourself out to be like you some type of Nicki Minaj or some type of Eve bitch or Missy Elliott or something. You ain't that, okay? You're Lil' Kim. You're a down south Lil' Kim. And the only thing that's competing with you is Rashida, okay? So... And gangsta boo, go somewhere and sit down, bitch. Go, go, just, just sit down. Stop acting like you more than everybody. Julian came up with some receipts in a contract saying that that was his money and it didn't have nothing to do with Trina. Trina couldn't say nothing. Trina been going on and on and on and on and on and on, and on about Julian, but when he poured out that damn contract, her team nor her had nothing to say. So now she goes in saying. It ain't even just about the album. My mama died. You didn't reach out. You Now it ain't all about the album. Now you want to throw your mama in now. Like, come on, Trina. Like, girl, bye. Whatever. 
So now we get into this annoying ass Suki girl. Now apparently she got, you know, she working with Chaotic on some videos, you know, because apparently she's Instagram famous. I never heard of this damn bitch. I've never heard of her, period. And I know somebody will come in my inbox, but everybody else heard of her. I haven't. And my opinion is the only one that goddamn it matters. I ain't heard of that bitch and she's annoying. Then Miami Tip comes up while her and Chaotic is sitting there and apparently Miami Tip is trying to be a manager. Baby, these bitches come with a storyline every goddamn season. I'm telling you, one minute they want to be a stripper. Next minute they want to be a motherfucking nail technician. Now they want to be a damn manager. I don't know what the fuck she trying to manage. But Suki ain't going to... Mm -hmm. And then she got three kids. I ain't know she had no fucking kids. But then again, again, I don't know that bitch. But when I look at her, I don't see mother. But okay, there's a lot of bitches I look at and I don't see mother. But that's another story. <coughs> So, Jocelyn and Ballistic, they sit down and they're talking. Um, she's dancing, and uh, Jocelyn got a body on her. I don't like that bitch at all, but she got a body on her. And then she starts talking about Prima Donna. I don't know. I, like I said, I really don't know what the basis of this beef is. I know when um, Prima Donna was on Love & Hip Hop Atlanta, they had beef after filming was over with. So, I don't know. But Jocelyn says she don't fuck with that bitch. She's trying to stay uh, cool far away from the drama but she don't fucking fuck with prima donna and she's a prima piggy that's what the fuck she said okay and all i know about prima donna is geisha 305 went the fuck in on her ass for the bt awards about whatever the fuck she had on this shit was funny as a motherfucker but to each his own honey to each his own so nikki you know talks to hood bread about what happened with joy and trick and how she feel like Briscoe just been th been putting her name out there, like straight up lying on her, like saying that, you know, she fucked him and she didn't. And at this point, I'm like, okay, bitch, you're doing way too much protesting. Bitch, did you fuck him or did you not? You keep saying that you didn't. So, okay. So now it's time for Briscoe's party. And um, Prima Donna basically sees Joy. She, she like, you must be feeling Briscoe. Yeah, you feeling Briscoe, bitch, because I am too. But I'm 31 and I don't, mm -mm, I'm too classy for that. You know, you can't, I can't go for those caliber of men anymore. Why? Because that's ghetto. It's ghetto in, in inner city and things of that nature. I'm not supposed to be doing that. However, we see this girl named Chameleon. So apparently she got a song called Twerk for Jesus. I never heard of her ass either. But they all sit on the couch talking about sucking dick. And I'm just like, girl. To the point to where Amara and MJ just left from over, over there on the couch. So Nikki confronts Briscoe when he walks in. Basically saying, did you say we fucked? Briscoe said we did. All I said was that we used to kick it. We was kicking it. That's all. But honestly, Briscoe, when people say we were kicking it, a lot of the times that means we were fucking it. Because I know if I say I kicked it with somebody, I fucked them. That's the best way to say I fucked somebody without saying I fucked somebody. Like if I was just, you know, fucking you and wasn't in a relationship or a situation, shit, bitch, I was kicking it with you. That's what I take from kicking it. So you know what I mean? Okay, whatever. So, um... Joy said, well, you can go back over there with Trick. And then that's when um, Nikki was like, no, you can have that again. Blah, 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 blah. Shay brings her damn Francine DW looking ass in that took a front Amara again about this JoJo shit. Shay, grow the fuck up and get a decent storyline because all you ever do is fight with people about trivial things that don't fucking matter. Grow the fuck up. Okay, JoJo is a fake ass bitch. But if she wants to be friends with the bitch again, that is her business, not yours. Talking about you don't fuck with her. You don't tell nobody who they can and can't fucking be friends with, bitch. Get Like you get a new wig and you think you can run something. Shut the fuck up. You don't do shit but run your mouth. Then MJ confronts Julian. And Julian tells MJ to butt out and ain't got nothing to do with him and ain't none of his business and, and MJ just goes to fuck off. But I don't see nothing wrong with MJ going to fuck off on him because at the end of the day, if Amara told him that you tried to slide in the bed with her, he deserved to be checking your motherfucking ass. So you can go on with saying that ain't none of his business. And when it got something to do with his woman, it has a it is his motherfucking business. Okay, bitch? So, no. Julian is a slimy ass nigga. Now, I don't know if he really stole that money for Trina or not. And I don't know if he really slid in the bed, tried to slide in the bed with Amara. But he is, he does give me trash. 
That's all I can really say about that. With that being said, you guys, this is my review on Love and Hip Hop Miami. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. My Instagram is at the bottom. My cash app is also at the bottom, and my PayPal is on my homepage. If you want to donate to either one, do so just so we can make this channel so much better for your ratchet ass needs, whether it be ratchet reality recaps, hot topics, or all things real talk. With that being said, this be your boy Scotty, and I'm signing the fuck out. Till next time, peace out.